<laughs> okay. Or how about this one? How about, hey, I'm mad about it. Ooh, uh, aggressive. It's episode 28. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, Alex, We're at a point now where the number is just going to make me laugh every time. <laughs> yeah, because you're like, wow, the hell, what's wrong with me, you'll say? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Alex, Jim, analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Yes. And um, uh, I, I used to know the Latin or Greek, I think, Greek root of the word analyze. Uh, and it means to loosen. Huh. To so sort of like take apart, like loosen something and look That's inside okay. of it. Okay. Yeah. I think it's reasonable to say that we do that. That's fair. That's a good description. Particularly lately, the last five episodes, we've really done, ah, let's do the thing we said we would do. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. <laughs> For the people. <laughs> For me, I'm good either way. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, in fact, I have a nothing related to this. Just a quick thing to share with you because I, I don't think this joke has legs. I was on a, uh, I was in a comedy show, and I had this dumb joke about the television show Friends. Sure. And I accidentally backed into a delightful punchline that I'm like, oh, that, that was great. Which you know when you you're doing the regular joke and you think of a thing in the moment. And you're like, oh, yeah. that was probably the whole thing I was waiting for was to think of that joke. And here's the joke I'll show with you. I watched the Friends reunion. Did you watch the Friends reunion? I have not seen it. All right. Well, it's not a proper reboot. It's not another episode because they've decided they don't want to do that. And I would like it if they did that. Now, this is my idea for how the episode would go is Chandler says to Monica, hey, you want to go to Central Park? And she says, oh, I can't have coffee after seven. And so not be, and every, you know, and, and also plus Joey had that stroke and, you know, that's not fun. And then Joey <laughs> walks in and he goes, how are you doing? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing I walked into and it just made me laugh all day. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a very good, very good stroke. <laughs> now, the other thing that made me laugh was because then I just kept doing my jokes, and then every couple of jokes I would just go, "How are you doing?" Because it was just yeah. funny to me. It's an automatic runner. Yeah, and uh, and of course the other comics was the finest thing they had seen, of course, because they're comics, and it was the finest. But, and then another guy got up and he goes, he goes, how you doing? And I'm like, no, not up, down. Cause he kept going, how you doing? I go, you're just smiling now or you're a gangster. That's not a stroke. And then I was analyzing. <laughs> Good. I'm gonna steal my bit, steal it right. And I think the other funny thing was cause I, I got the eye down too. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. The eyes yeah really, <laughs> she like sort of got real still. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't know how long I can do this bit or how long I should do this bit, but right. it was so funny to me. And I was like, oh, I'd love to be in front of an audience. And a lot of people are laughing. And I look out, there's one guy with his hand, and I'm like, ah, damn it. All right. Because that's what'll happen. That's inevitable. <laughs> that is what will happen. Hopefully, yes, that absolutely. guy thinks it's the funniest because sometimes that happens. But sometimes, <laughs> that does happen. but sometimes they're just doing that to prove a point. They're like, I got a sense of humor about it. And you're like, yeah, you're probably still bummed about it. Yeah, that drives me nuts when uh, the, when there's a stand-up who has a disability or an issue. Yeah. Or even any like physical attribute and that's everything, the whole act is that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a big fat guy. I'm like, oh, okay. But don't you think, isn't there anything weird about email that you want to talk about? <laughs> you can email too, right? You can't all relate to being fat. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, no, I, no, 100% I agree. Uh, is, is if your physical thing is a, like bald guys 
I guess, sort of have to mention being bald once, but do you really? Do you really? We've, it's not new. Like, yeah. um, one time, uh, a, a celebrity I won't name introduced me to this woman he was dating, and she was from Greenland. She was a native Greenlander. Right. And that's how he introduced her. And he said, hey, uh, have you ever met anyone from Greenland? And I was like, no, this is great. That's how you do it. You, that you can say, that's significant, but you can't go, my girlfriend is from uh, Boston. <laughs> I've met people from Boston. Yeah. An hour away by train. I've met okay. Boston and regularly it's to bring it up. Regularly, it hasn't been great. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the baldness is Boston in this analogy. Yeah. So if you're seven foot six, then then that can be your act. Uh, yeah. I have a lot yeah. of rules. Just, you know, just email me at jimbruce.gmail <laughs> if you want all my comedy rules <laughs> and things you can and can't do. Yeah, there's a, there's a YouTube video of uh, Shaquille O'Neal, which it's Shaquille O'Neal using regular sized things. Right. And it's pretty great actually. Him with a little, with a water bottle. <laughs> Just the yeah. tiniest thing. Great. And, uh, yeah, that thing is really, really great. Um, and somebody had written, um, Shaquille O'Neal holds everything like he's holding a whistle. <laughs> it's <just> always to the <laughs> things like that. Yeah. It's actually pretty funny. Great. Um, the the song you picked, you you picked the song. Um, now I'm blanking. Oh, sleeping with the television on. Ah. The song you picked. Did you remember that you picked that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I and I deliberately waited because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to email you earlier today and go, "Hey, what are we doing?" And then I was like, "Oh, then I'll look dumb." And I was like, well, I am clearly I am dumb. So what I will do is wait until 24 minutes into the Zoom when Jim says the name of the song. Ah. And then I'll Google the lyrics. <laughs> That's fantastic. The funny thing is, normally we both do almost the exact amount of effort as the other person, which is we'll both listen to the song twice. Yeah. And uh, we'll both maybe ask one other person, mention it to one other person, but probably not. You mention it to Sue if Sue's there, just to go sure. here. Hope this doesn't bother you. I'm going to listen to this song, and Sue's very nice. Or I'll say it to Mary Jo, hope this doesn't bother you. And she'll say yeah, it does because she's a different kind of person. Um, but uh, this time, I think we did a great thing, which is you made no effort. And for some reason, I made a shit ton. I was. <laughs> Because I listened to the song and I was like, you know, I think I like this song better than I thought I did. And then I was like, I wonder how many other songs have used that special effect. And I was Googling that or Googling other songs about television. Uh, Bruce Springsteen's 57 channels and nothing on. Oh. And then... Um, um, what that song, um, Dirty Laundry, I forgot about Dirty Laundry is a song about television and it uses sound effects. I was like, okay, it uses sound effects, Right. telephone ringing. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And there's all these punk bands that have done television related songs. I mean, there's television, the band. Television, the band. And then I Googled why, when, <laughs> And why did we stop doing the television sign-off? Ah, yeah. It's about that. So I went, I was like, I, I think I thought I had to write a paper. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you were headed that way. I, uh, so I, because I was curious, so just to uh, back up, just in case I haven't said this, the song is Sleeping With The Television On. And as Alex mentioned last episode, he giddily said, oh, and it has a sound effect. Because <laughs> of sound effect. Like so many songs. Yeah. And this one starts with it, and it starts with the television sign-off 
that would have been prevalent during the 70s yeah a little bit into the 80s yeah this is kind of the end of that yeah and i was like well when did that kind of stop absolutely and i thought it might have been the 80s it actually made it way all the way into the 90s i guess we were still doing it okay because we had regular broadcast tv and there was another we got cable in 82 or three or four yeah and then not everybody had it of course right so cable was yes you had a friend who had cable yeah for a while and then your family got cable last for sure oh the worst and then i found out and there's another reason why that happened there were a couple reasons one television executives at the time i guess had faith in humanity which is they thought well nobody's gonna be up no, like they thought there was no money. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't have to have television on because they were like, well, you know, people got lives. Not realizing that they were part of the plan to slowly destroy that. Uh, I say in the beginning of my punk song about television. <laughs> in, in your paper about your punk song. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then in the 90s, the FCC changed a rule about how television operated that yeah. made it less expensive to have a 24-hour channel if you weren't cable, which is it used to be a rule that you had to have a human person there to turn off the transmitter. Wow. And there, you had to have a human person there to differentiate between this is a, only a test of the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> right. In the case of an actual emergency, you would have been given other information. You need right. a human being to differentiate and and let. I don't think it was the listeners because the thing would happen and you and it would tell you it wasn't an emergency. But right. they would have to tell other people like, "Hey, the sound that you heard. Don't let that sound trigger the automatic thing. It's not that thing. It's not radiation or somebody had to throw the switch." Mm -hmm. So the trolley would only run over one guy <laughs> yes. instead of the five guys. Oh, I always like a reference to the trolley problem. That's all. Awesome. the trolley problem. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm an optimist. I say it's the trolley opportunity. Oh, that's nice. That's what they say in China. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the trolley opportunity. You Okay, so you have a chance to run over one guy. Or you could, but then if it's a trolley opportunity, you're like, well, I'm, I'm running over five for sure. If it's yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to come back and pick, and I'll just kick that other guy to death <laughs> after the <laughs> trolley's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll die from the trauma. He's not that far from the other turn. He'll see it. Oh, yeah. He'll have to watch five people be decapitated. Yeah. Then he'll see me kicking him to death. Even if he survives, he's gonna take up drinking or something and then he's gonna die slowly oh either yeah way, it's follow him around the rest of his life either, either way it's a win yeah i'll be the guy that i'll follow him and then once every three months or so i'll remind him <laughs> oh, yeah remember then what happened with the trolley yeah. can i buy you a drink <laughs> <laughs> well we're going to hell jukebox let me play that judy garland song Ding, 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 Oh, no. Yeah, it should be five clangs. <laughs> oh, great. So, ah, so, so hey, at the beginning of this song, yeah, it's snippets of, is it the national anthem that they used to play? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about that? What about the fact that you used to hear the national anthem all the time? Yeah. If you were a slaggard and you stayed up really late. You saw that. And then I guess in the 50s, if you looked at the old imagery, you saw an Indian head behind the, the color thing. Oh, oh. Remember that? I don't remember that. I just remember the flag. Well, that like predated saving. us. Yeah, that predated us. But I've seen it in movies about television where you'll uh -huh. see the howdy doody. And because it was the same thing when like TV came on, um, there was the image of the, the color wheel, which I guess right. you test your TV. I don't know. Yeah. 
the bars. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, the national anthem every damn night. Yeah. I don't know if it's good or bad or uh, if it's good or worse this way. It's a, have, not a great song. Have you ever, see, are you a fan of the old SCTV? Sure. There's this one sketch where they did, and I'm blanking on the name of the jazz singer, but it was the, the signing off with, uh, oh, Mel Torme. It was now television signs off with Mel Torme and they showed the flag and it was, oh, say, can you see? It was very funny. It's worth looking up. And it was the great Rick Moranis uh, pre getting punched in the face recently. Right. Yeah. It was before 40, that. 40 years before that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you would hear the national anthem. Well, first you would hear the, uh, and you still, they still do this. The local affiliates will go, uh, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Terrifying. <laughs> yep. Um, it was always very funny to me as a kid, as I'm like, it's 10 o'clock. Of course, everyone knows where their children are. Yeah. It's like, if you ask this question at like six, it's reasonable. Yeah. Because it's still light out. They might be playing kickball. Yeah. Uh, like it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock was the middle of the fucking night when you were a kid. Yeah. Well, when I was a kid, if my parents had seen that, they would have said, ah, yeah, we know where he is. He's outside. <laughs> where we threw him i was allowed to be out way later than a person should be at my age oh really oh no opposite last kid yeah of many kids oh yeah we were done my parents were done with effort you were only loosely affiliated <laughs> with your household right <laughs> yeah yeah yes yeah i was like a guest, I was like a new kid on a TV show. We'll see if this works out. <laughs> right. It's gonna yeah, you, were, you were temping with the Bruces. Yeah. <laughs> Is that gonna save the show, the Bruce marriage? No. <laughs> Much like Oliver, it didn't work. <laughs> didn't work. Um, so I like this Billy Joel song that we're talking about. I really do. Oh. And it starts with the sign off and it's it's pretty peppy, pretty peppy little tune. Pretty peppy little tune. Um, it's, I think, just a great image that I guess people still sleep with the television on, you, you know, but it was a great little, he's not always great with poetic imagery. Yeah. And, and this is just a nice thing. He's not saying like, this person is sad or this person is lonely you're saying this person is sleeping with the television on and it tells you kind of a lot about what's happening in this person's life they don't have anywhere to be they don't want to go to bed for whatever reason there it always was a sad feeling yeah when you would wake up in the middle of the night and the tv was still on yeah and you're like oh fuck <laughs> i'm a loser i was i must have been super drunk <laughs> you know, it's never good news. Like, I, I, I was so excited for my good day at work that I, I fell asleep at the TV on. Yeah. Yeah. I still fall asleep at the TV on. It's just progressively earlier and earlier when that happens. <laughs> yeah. It's like now 7 30, and I thought I wanted to watch this show on Netflix, and um, the show changed my mind with how I felt, of how entertained I was. Yeah. And now, even the television will just go, are, are you still there? Yeah. Are you still watching me? <laughs> That's okay. true. So I'm out of here then. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, yeah. So I like that it is a good poetic image and you kind of know before you hear a word of it, which I, I think we shouldn't even get to it tonight. <laughs> I think the perfect tribute to the song would be for everybody to fall asleep before we start talking about it. Uh, I have a feeling it's already happened. Yeah, I bet there's a couple of people out. <laughs> I also like musically. I like there's a there's a the keyboard is a weird keyboard for him. Yeah, I don't hear. I don't think I hear a lot in a lot of Billy Joel songs. It's um, uh, I don't know how else to say it, but it's a uh, higher keys than I'm used to hearing him play 
underneath the, the music and it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, it's a similar to what was in The Entertainer last time we talked. Indeed, absolutely. Um, it, it, uh, it, it, it seems like, is, am I right in that it goes in opposition to the rest of the music while it's going? It feels that way to me. I'm not, not sure I know what you mean by that. Um, it doesn't seem to go along. It, it, it's complementary, but it doesn't just follow along with the melody. It's uh -huh. a different thing. And it's a different, it seems yeah. to be a, a complementary tempo, but not the same tempo. It's like syncopated. Yes, maybe. I think is the word. I would believe you that that's the word. I'm not a musician in any sense of the word. I, I wish I was because I hear things like this and I'm like, why do I like this and why is it different? It's good, I think, that we have this podcast where neither one of us knows a lot about music <laughs> so that we can, <laughs> weekly, we can fail to learn anything from each other. What would be great is if we developed a rabid following of musicians whose sole purpose was like, ah, damn it, okay, let's email these dummies. Oh, That's yeah. That is. Yeah, we are begging for a music education with this podcast. Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you know how many episodes in? <laughs> we're nowhere i've had so many dreams where i could play the piano oh interesting a ton of them but in every dream i understand the piano exactly the same way in my dream i'm conv convinced i'm a savant who can just go like this and it <laughs> will happen <laughs> so you're like a fucking muppet in a haunted house <laughs> you know, and I asked, the, the dream has been intense enough that on more than one occasions, I've woken up and for a good half hour, I think I believed it in regular life. And went, oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 wait, no. That's great. <laughs> I've never had that. Yeah, don't have music dreams, clearly. That is my only, my deep wish is that if, Reincarnation could be true in some sense. I'm like, well, I hope at some point I did. That'd be good. Right. That's fine. why you have those dreams. Yeah. 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 Now that's not the case because they're, you know, you know, there's just this one and you're done, folks. But it'd be neat if it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but that's why maybe in a previous life um, I showed up at school naked a lot. <laughs> I'm sure that one's true. That's probably true. Sure. <sighs> Does it look probably I'm in this life as well, and I blocked it. Yeah, should I look up old news clippings of a uh, nude kid shows up again or something? <laughs> like, hey, yeah. yeah. News clippings from the 40s. A guy looks like me, but naked. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The naked valedictorian strikes again. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm going to start the lyrics despite our threat. Um, right. I've been watching you waltz all night, Diane. Nobody, I love this line. Yeah. It's, Nobody's fine. Go, oh, go ahead. Say why you love this. I'm sorry. I, I don't normally cut you off. But uh, for a first line of a Billy Joel song, it's very weird. Yeah. It's what well, I don't know what year it is. I've been watching you waltz. Like that's what's happening behind you, I think. People right. are waltzing. Um, and then Diane. Yeah. So he's not a creep who's just watching from a distance. At some point, he got her name, hopefully yeah. from her. Yeah. Um, but he very rarely will just like drop a name in there like that. Yeah. And then I don't think it comes up again. Or maybe it does. Um, but it, it's a very, <laughs> it's, it, you could read it a lot of ways. It's threatening. Right. <laughs> um, it's completely, I love that it's just waltz. What bars is this creep going to? In 1979, New York, where hot young ladies are waltzing. <laughs> right? It's so weird. Or it's like, it's a teacher that he had, and he called her Mrs. Hogsworth her whole life, and this is the first time he decided to use her first name. Yeah. 
Oh, Diane. <laughs> I've made my intentions clear now. I'm not using your teacher name anymore. My feelings are real. Uh, by the way, there's a series of videos on YouTube you can watch that are just prank videos of kids calling their teachers by their first name. Great. Um, and having, well, just it's videos of them reacting. Fantastic. And one of them is just- You can do what I do. You can do what I did and uh, become a high school teacher and be terrible at it. <laughs> and they will all call you by your first name. And then you'll leave town. Yeah, there's one that's like a coach and somebody says, hey, Gary, and he goes, no. <laughs> really funny that's the correct reaction yeah and he's my, my reaction is always like oh they they like me <laughs> oh, good that means they'll behave we had a teacher who was like you guys go ahead and call me this and then like two weeks later he's like listen the principal came and talked to me <laughs> I guess you had to call me Mr. Morrison or whatever his name was. And that was really funny to me that the principal was like, you can't do that. Fucking that dude was sleeping with the television on. Yeah. When... Sorry. Okay. So you may, you may proceed. I'm sorry. I had to get all that out about the first line. No, so that's great. That. Now what's, here's what's funny. Cause I, then I want to tell you what I thought about the first line too, which is similar to you. I love the first line. And for some reason, I immediately know he's not talking about a, a waltz that it fills in for something else. And, uh -huh. and, I, and I think because of the way it jumps out at me, I was immediately thinking he's talking about somebody wasting time going through preset motions, mm. you know, which, is the, which is what oh. the waltz became. The waltz became... You know, the waltz as a dance is, you know, I don't know how many steps it is, but if it's nine steps, it's like, here's the nine steps you do. That's the dance. If you make a mistake, you're bad at the waltz. Right. And yeah. There's there are, yeah, it's a very rigid dance. And there's nothing wrong with that because rigid dances can be cool um, if you're watching people do them, but they're not as fun if you're... Oh place dancing yeah and you're muttering numbers to yourself yes and that's what it feels like to me i've been watching you waltz all night diane and it feels like i've been watching you just do this thing oh okay. going through the motions repeating yeah, yeah okay i can see that there's also, if i can there's another colloquial definition of waltz oh but to sort of carelessly bumble into a situation Oh, yeah. Oh, are you going to fucking waltz in here and just start throwing shit on the ground? Yeah. Look at you being uh, flip and frivolous and you do whatever you want. You're not paying attention to anybody else's uh, reactions to this behavior. You yep. can't just waltz in here. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And what's funny is um, all three of those, your your reaction to the sinister, my react, they all three kind of fit, which is a testament to the song actually being pretty poetic. Yeah. There's some room to, you know, there's like, there's not not literally he's saying, I went on my motorcycle or whatever. And you're like, okay, well, it's about a guy who went on his motorcycle. <laughs> right. Um, I've been watching you waltz all night, Diane. Nobody's found a way behind your defenses, which, um, man, that could go either way, but that sure, sir, that sure does fit your first instinct of like, because your defenses are, are often uh, useful things. For <laughs> yeah. Creep. Yeah. If you're Diane out waltzing by yourself. Uh, they never noticed the zap gun in your hand. Uh, there, the first thing I thought was, uh, I immediately thought about tasers, but that's not the, what this is pre taser. About. This is pre taser. And then it dawned on me that we're talking about the television, which is while the television still exists, it has had multiple iterations. And I, and I thought to myself, it kind of, it sees, it seems like zap gun is obviously remote, but, I, but then I also like zap gun being like a fifties reference to sci-fi very mm -hmm. prominent on 50s television. I like that. It's a weird, yeah, it's a weird phrase. And, uh, but a I- Gun, a zip gun is a thing. Yeah. 
but that's not this. No. Gun is a, a weird phrase I don't know that I've heard. So I feel like, uh, I feel mostly what it's like is, I feel, feel like mostly what it's about is a remote and a person who is very non-committal, mm -hmm. not sort of willing to take anything too serious or commit to anything for very long, just in case there's something better. Right. And if it's television at the time, which it was, it was about 1980, uh, Glass Houses, then there weren't that many options. So you right. were still being like, clicking around to see if there's anything better on, but there, there's not. Interesting. Until, yeah, it's all television metaphors. Yeah. Until you're pointing it and stunning their senses is the next line, which um, I just think literally means, you know, turning them down is what I think. <laughs> right, yeah. And maybe uh, not being very nice about it and not even necessarily even, or maybe even not turning them down at all and just kind of whipping away to something else. Right. Channel surfing. Yeah. Instead of channel um, surfing, I do like wiener surfing. Wait, what happened to your face? I said instead of channel surfing. Wiener, wiener surfing. <laughs> yeah, that's being dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also like uh, nobody's found a way behind your defenses because it uh, reminds everyone that he was a boxer at some point. Oh, yeah. And it's the thing that a boxer would observe about a boxer. Yes, absolutely. And in that way, it's reminding me of Zanzibar. Uh, talking about uh, Ali going downtown. Yeah, Muhammad Ali, remember? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. Well, that I've not thought of that. That's a good observation. Yeah, I like that. I think um, when people are specialists, their the language of their specialty slips into all their conversations. And uh, like when you talk to people uh, in LA or in show business, they, when they tell a story, they'll always be like, "So I'm at the bar talking to this guy." Cut to. I'm in my car. I'm like, do people talk like that? <laughs> I think more people do now because they hear TV characters do it. Because TV shows now are mostly about other people making TV shows. Can I ask you to do something for me? And 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 you might need a couple drinks and you at a bar to do this for me. But I think it would be great from you in New York to any one of your semi well known friends. If you remember this, when you're telling them a story, say cut to do that part and then go and then uh -huh. interior fade in do that <laughs> interior fade yeah. in. man <laughs> man mid-20s walks in <laughs> right roberto 26 <laughs> walks toward me carrying a briefcase all caps <laughs> <laughs> yeah i will do that all right good because i think Let's see how far i can go before or uh, John Mulaney walks away. Yeah, exactly. And he goes, It won't I'll be long. I was sharing something personal with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. All right. Yeah. You're up. All right. Well, this is just our, our little verse or a little chorus. All night long, all night long, you shoot them down because you're waiting for somebody good to come on. All night long, all night long but you're sleeping with the television on. Great. And that affirms our the interpretation, by the way, of her callously switching choices. Yes. And I very much like um, the double entendre of come on. You're waiting for somebody good to come on to you. Yeah. You're waiting for something good to come on TV. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice. It's really good. And how about, because this happens a lot, this song, how about you do the next one and then I'll, okay. do, the next, yeah, yeah. I'll do the, and then I'll do the next chorus and the next verse and we'll do it. And then we'll switch back and forth if it stops doing that. <laughs> All right. And then the last one we'll just do together. 
<laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Uh, where am I? You say you're looking for someone solid here. You can't be bothered with those just for the night boys. Tonight, unless you take some kind of chances, dear. Mm. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, you'll wake up with the white noise. Okay, well. Well, we don't like the cheap rhyme of dear. Yeah. Although someone's waltzing and her name is Diane. You, when, you might call her dear. True. But everybody's 70 in that scenario. Yeah. Diane, dear. <laughs> My knee is swollen from waltzing. <laughs> you know what's funny too is when it's sung, because again, this is a pretty this it's peppy the whole time through. Uh the deer sounds fine. But it doesn't particularly fit. It just mm -hmm. sounds fine because the whole thing is sung really well. And I agree with you. I think it's just it's just a damn rhyme. It's just like we gotta have yeah. a tonight in lace, you take some of the chances near. Sure. There you go. Fixed it. Fixed perfect, Billy Joel. Let me get uh, it and I kind of like, I think we're implying too that she's, you can't be bothered with those just for the night boys. And that there's probably a little bit of, it could be an accusation, but like, you're just assuming that. Yeah, we don't really know what his relationship is to Diane, aside from <laughs> stalking her. Then I also mean though, she's making an assumption about the boys that they're just oh, yeah. the night boys. But they might not be that she comes into it with this like flip little like, no, not you, not you. It's got to be the right, perfect thing. And Lord knows we've all known people and been that person who thought they had to wait for the perfect whatever. Yes, especially the very great trope of the super drunk person <laughs> with no money at a bar at 1 a.m. being picky. Right. No, I'm watching a relationship. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go home and drink water and go out during the daytime then. Yeah, and, uh, and get over your needing to be drunk to talk to people. So, yeah, you know, there's stuff for you to work on. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I do like this uh, lyric. Um, other than deer, yeah, I'm not sure I like <laughs> Uh, 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 but I do like tomorrow morning you'll wake up with a white noise. Nice television reference. Yep, a thing that doesn't happen anymore, but did. Yep, it's, in those uh, days of television. Now that means um, you've hit the wrong input. Yeah. Like oh, it's HDMI five, and I don't have a device plugged in there. Yeah. <laughs> the only way to get white noise now. Yeah. Also sometimes called snow. That would be another reference for it back in the day, kids. That's a, a regional preference. Yeah. Probably. And then we go all night long, all night long. You're only standing there because somebody once did somebody wrong. Ooh. I think that's pretty good. You're only, st and I'm assuming, and clearly the somebody who got done wrong is Diane. Yeah. You're, you're only standing there because somebody once did somebody wrong. And I like using the phrase in a way that divorces him from, you know, he's not literally saying her. I just like that, just saying it to her that way. Mm -hmm. All yeah. night long, all night long. But you'll be sleeping with the television on. Wait, now he's kind of being mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, trademark fashion. Yeah. He's taking a superior position, even though he's at the same bar and he's not even waltzing. Yeah. He, almost, he seems to be taking a little schadenfrauder with it, too. Yeah. Like, ah, uh -huh, you're by yourself. He's doing, I told you so, even though he didn't tell her anything. Yeah. Like, see? That's yeah. what I would have told you would have happened. Yeah. And now it, it starts to become more obvious to me that he's he's the just for the night boy that she's like come on <laughs> come on yeah. yes 
Uh, and now it becomes even clearer because he says, your eyes are saying, talk to me, talk to me. I like the, re I like the repetition, but your attitude is don't waste my time. <laughs> your eyes are saying, talk to me, talk to me. And, and boy, there's never been anything problematic with a gentleman thinking, yeah, but her eyes said this thing. <laughs> right. Well, uh, tip for you fellows at home, the eyes don't say nothing. Yeah. They just don't. They certainly don't hold up in court. Yeah. <laughs> but you won't hear a word because it just might be the same old line. Um, and I, I wondered about this when I looked at the lyric earlier. Is it, is it because the character in the song that he's playing, not Diane, is searching for something to say and he doesn't really have a good thing to say, but he, he really would like to say something good. Or is it that the truth is he's loading up a sucker line and he's like, yeah, maybe it's the same old line, but you know, this is people. I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure. What do you think? I think he's making a lot of assumptions about why she's there. Right. <laughs> and uh she so far hasn't given us any indication that she wants to talk to anybody. Like he's saying, like, oh, nobody's saying the right stuff, huh? And like she could very easily be saying, like, no, I don't want anyone to talk to me. Yeah. Just have nice eyes. Yeah. So great. leave me alone. <laughs> It'd be great too if there was just a line where just Diane goes, I work here. I'm, <laughs> I'm the bartender. <laughs> You have to buy something or get out. <laughs> Stop writing in your notebook. Yeah, I, I'm talking to lots of people, but, you know, schnapps. He wanted schnapps. <laughs> but they are gross, but fine. What do you want? <laughs> you won't hear a word. It just might be the same old line. Yeah, it's going to be. But yeah, she, there's no point where it's like, you are definitely here because you told me to meet somebody. <laughs> nope. These are all assumptions being made from a distance. Yeah. And now what's cool, and before you get into it, I like then just looking ahead. I'm looking ahead. I'm like, I like what it's about to lead into. Now thinking about it in those terms, in terms of, let's assume she's not the bartender. I think that was true that she's like <laughs> let's assume that she's she also maybe she's one of these ladies that has to deal with getting hit on by multiple and maybe she would be open to people if she just get left alone a minute just, <laughs> yeah entirely yeah, possible a minute um you know one of those ladies that have borrowed us to deal with creeps or any lady is what i'm saying but still <laughs> um and then it goes into our next uh, verse, why don't you take it from there? This isn't really easy for me to say, Diane. <laughs> I know you don't need anybody's protection. I really wish I was less of a thinking man and more a fool who's not afraid of rejection. All night long, all night long. I'll just be standing here because I know I don't have the guts to come on all night long, all night long, and I'll be sleeping with the television on. Well, now he's sleeping. He's It's on him now, which is good. Yeah, and now what this, he says protection, man, he could have said projection because uh, it seems very <laughs> much that this maybe, maybe this conversation didn't happen at all because yeah. seeing this lady and he's like, oh man, you know, uh, well, she didn't go out with that guy and I'm not that guy, that guy's in shape or whatever. She didn't like this guy and I know what she's gonna say. Um, so maybe he ain't, ain't said nothing to her. He's he's making a lot of assumptions about this lady. A lot of assumptions. And he's got a real uh, incel vibe at this point. <laughs> Cause I think, you know, you and I have both had our uh, dweeby times and we always tried to make ourselves feel superior by saying shit like, 
I really wish I was less of a thinking man <laughs> and more a fool who's not afraid of rejection. <laughs> yeah. My problem is I'm too smart and intellectual. I wish I was an idiot who worked out, then I'd get laid. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's what he's doing. <sighs> fucking incel. He's going to fucking uh, be at the Capitol riots. Yeah. 40 oh, years yeah. after the song. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, yeah, there's absolutely. Uh, Man, if there ever was an every man, it's this idiot because it's the it's the man. I know what she's gonna say if I even talk to her. Right. So why bother talking to her? Why bother right. giving her the chance to reject me? Or you know, because well, and also it's there's a certain level of oh God, I'm an idiot. Why would she? Yeah, there's a sadness of that. There's that part of it. Right, and then the next drink, it becomes, she's bitch, man. Why is she being such a bitch? <laughs> you haven't talked to her, idiot. <laughs> you are having a whole relationship inside your head by yourself. And she's unaffected by your existence. Our friend, Tim Bennett, you know our friend, Tim Bennett from Facebook. I do. Uh, who's got a delightful career going uh, still as an actor. And it's funny because he's kind of, become this character actor because he used to be weird looking and he's become charming and odd looking but very good looking i don't know what happened i don't know how he did it. it's magic probably cut his hair he's gonna have the weirdest haircuts man don't matter he's got an odd charm about him he was meant to be the age he's at he's per it's perfect oh great but the entire time i've known him he's never been the guy who thought oh that lady's too good looking to me to talk to <laughs> yeah i was like oh and we go talk to her and sometimes he'd get shot down and he would always do the thing that he wouldn't literally do this but he would more or less go oh wonderful you've made a fine choice and he'd move along <laughs> yeah and as a result he always dated lovely ladies who were terribly good looking often very charming and whatever married a girl who's wonderful and I, I was just how happy for him that he just, for some reason, he's always known that about himself. Yeah. And he told me one time that what happened was, and he hooked up with this lady he wasn't attracted to, who had just eaten a bunch of Doritos. Oh, no. And she had Doritos in her teeth. And it <laughs> stuck with him. And he's like, ah, I'm never going to just come on to somebody because I'm desperate. Screw that. Why would I do that? And it corrected it. He responded the correct way. <laughs> he went, I just if I like somebody, I'll they give it a shot. If it don't work, it don't work. Right. I'll just be nice about it and I'll be polite. Yep. It won't. Yeah. I won't uh, let all my self worth depend on how this works out. Yep. It just sounds like he turned mentally healthy. Yeah, he, not to say that he wasn't weird in his 20s like all human beings. It's just he was always, the way he was weird was always hilarious and strange. Yeah, he's a charming dude. Not like, ah, oh, well, hope he gets through this before the arrest. It was never that. <laughs> no. Which was like, you know, me and Elwood, you're like, oh, hopefully they just don't get arrested and they figure out, hey, don't be so angry. <laughs> right. He's the guy who's like, if somebody's like, hey, Tim Bennett's coming over, he'd be like, oh, I know what kind of mood he's going to be in. Yeah. Be pretty much peppy and relaxed. Yeah. Tim Bennett is, I'll tell you the other kind of drunk he was. I don't think he drinks anymore. He was drunk that it, it was really fun to be drunk with him. You never wanted to be drunk. You never wanted him drunk and you weren't drunk only because he would, he would say things that were only hilarious to another drunk and he right. would, and he would keep doing it oh uh, yes and you'd be like oh i'm gonna murder you but it's not your fault but uh <laughs> you 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 keep doing a like like you keep doing an impression of foghorn leghorn for some reason why are you doing that <laughs> yeah well you're hoping for that thing where 
you do it a bunch of times and it works and then you keep doing it and people get mad at you but if you keep going it might come back around again yeah and that's glorious but it's a risk yeah <laughs> yep. it might also punch you or leave you behind how are you doing yes that's what i'm saying yeah i'll, I'll do that all day long um I use it like a spice you just a little bit here and there <laughs> The so comedy, I, it's a little comedy bay leaf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this is your chorus or mine? I don't remember. Oh, you go. Okay, all right. And it is a little different. It's all night long, all night long. I'll just be standing here because I know I don't have the guts to come on all night long, all night long, and I'll be sleeping with the television on. Or we already said that one and I forgot. <laughs> I think it's that. I think it's that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Your eyes are saying, talk to me, talk to me. But my attitude is, boy, don't waste my time. Did we say this one too? No. Okay. Your eyes, eyes are, no, we did. Because I said, your eyes ain't saying nothing. Yeah, but that was uh, before. It happens again. Okay. Very repetitive. Yeah. Your eyes are saying, talk to me, talk to me, but I won't say a word because it just might be somebody else's same old line. Yeah, it's the same thing, but he flipped the perspective. Yeah. All night long, all night long, we are only standing here because somebody might do somebody wrong. And then why do you finish it? Because we're doing it together. <laughs> uh, all night long, all night long, we'll be sleeping with the television on. Sleeping with the television on. Sleeping with the television on. It ends with same boat. We're in the same boat. We're in the same boat, which is not true. Yeah. He thinks we're in the same boat. She's fine. Yeah. That's what I think. It is a lot of projection onto her and what she wants and what she feels. How he got her name, I don't know. <laughs> it does feel like he asked, he's like the lean to the bartender and was like, what's that girl's name? And he's like, I don't know, Diane. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll sit here and drink about her for a while. <laughs> and I'll go right. home and try to jerk off, but I'll be too drunk. Yeah. And I'll fall asleep with the television on. I, bet I don't think she falls asleep with the television on. If she has a, a song, I bet the name of her song is I Don't Even Own a Television. She's one of those. She's one of those. Yeah. It's I, you don't want to date that person because that person is... Really, if it, it's the 80s, but she's waltzing. She's into all that retro stuff. I don't have a television. Okay. And I, I, I only listen to vinyl. Shut up. I don't have a television, but I watch TV shows on my laptop. Well, then you have a television. Yeah. And how are you doing that? This is the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and what's a laptop? You're amazing. You're from, the, Diane's from the future. Diane's from the future. Fuck. Now it all, well, now we got to do it again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she threw us off with the waltzing. We thought she was from the past. Yeah. Which we all are. She thought she had gone back farther. <laughs> That's what it is. She mistyped the date. Yeah, and he thinks she's a hipster because of the clothes. And I'm like, Ugh. oh my God, it's a classic love story. <laughs> I can't even see what you got your ankles covered. What is going on, Diane? Well, it's the 80s. Isn't this normal for you? Isn't this the normal for the 1880s? <laughs> no, no, Diane. Oh, Diane. <laughs> You've done it again. Ah, oh, we unlocked this song. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I, I've said this about Billy Joel a lot. If you break down almost any of his songs, we get deep enough. They're all about time travel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we didn't start the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Just cuts off at Rock and Roller Cola Wars. What's up with that? Yeah, Brenda and Eddie. Brenda is from one decade. That explains the weird high school stuff that just, you're like. 
It is great that um, the names he uses in his songs aren't like rock song names. Yeah. <laughs> There's Brenda and Eddie and Diane, yeah. Rosalinda. Yeah. It's very local. Those are like New York names he grew up with. Virginia, well, I don't think was in many songs up until then, and I think it's been in some sense. But you're right. possible. Yeah. I don't have the depth and breadth of knowledge to nod. Do you know any Virginias? I don't. I know one in the, any of the songs that are I mentioned her make her mad because <laughs> there's <laughs> it's never good. No, they're they aren't. And they're <laughs> and they're the kind that are prominent enough pop songs that they're incessantly brought up by people be because great minds think alike and just constantly people like come out, Virginia, shut up. Shut up. Yeah, you would hate it if there's only one well-known song with your name in it. Yeah. I'm changing my trivia question based on that. Oh, nice. If I can find the correct answer. Um, yes, okay. And while you're finishing that, I will just say the song, um, <laughs> we should always mention this one, this happens in a Billy Joel song. It has a nice tight tidy little ending yes you like that i do i like that this one is very repetitive which is normally annoying but um it's very fitting for the theme a of television and b of this guy just going in circles inside his own head instead of talking to somebody yeah i think you could dance to the song which is not our criteria for the show but i think about it sometimes with his music i think you could there might be like four songs you can dance to. Yeah. There's probably a couple you can waltz to. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was a grand observation. That was great. It would be true. I, I wrote it. this for Diane, he would say before he does any of those songs. <laughs> uh, now, you didn't pick this picture because people are waltzing behind you. Nope. That's just a happy coincidence. Indeed, it is. Now, I'm not going to give you the hint for what it's really about. I'm going to get to give you a pretend hint. Um, now, the people in the back, back are probably what, what industry do they really work in? Oh, yeah, I'm going to enlarge you. Going to speaker view. These people are uh, in show business. Correct, correct. And, uh, and this guy with this the bald been... head in the front. He seems really important. Yeah, he might be the director. Right. And a lot of people, what do they call the director? Uh, sir? Yeah. Or what if you're frustrated with him? Ah, uh, son of a bitch. Yeah, but old timey, you're like, he thinks he's so great. He's a, a <laughs> he's a, a uh, he's a, you think you're the important guy? Oh, the hot shot? Yeah. yeah, not a hot shot. Not a hot shot? But close. Uh, the big cheese? Oh, oh you think <laughs> you're the top dog? Close, close, close. He's not the big cheese. Oh, you're the, you're the big banana. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they would say. Oh, you're the head honcho, eh? <laughs> I think you're really the bee's knees. Yeah, he's uh, not the big cheese, but he's big. He's the big kahuna. <laughs> he's the big wig. Yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, he's the big man on campus. Yep, yep. Oh, you're, big, you're a big shot, aren't you? Yeah. Are you big shot? <laughs> Is he the big shot? Yeah, but that's not really it. How great would it be if it was like, because he's a big shot. Yeah, no, but that's not really it. No, I just, no but... This is, there is a movie happening. Yep. And it's a huge uh, production. And it's all in one frame. Yep. So it's a really big shot. Yeah. Is it, was that it? Did I get it? 
uh, uh, I was thinking yeah. it's fight because I picked this. It's a, it's a different song, but I was like, oh, this would fit Big Shot. That's great. <laughs> it's a big shot. Um, so this is a first. It is beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful. There's a lot going on. It's, it looks like, like a big MGM Grand, a Metro Goldwyn Mayer picture. Yeah, it is definitely from that era, and I couldn't tell you the who made it because I didn't look that part up. But it is okay. a. Um, so we don't know what movie this is. We do know what movie it is, though. I just don't know what production company made it. I didn't happen to look up this. Uh, this is a classic film, and oh. this is absolutely a classic film, and this. I'll just say that the film is a little after the era you're looking at. Oh, it oh. Is a little bit after the era because oh, okay. the film itself, much like say Singing in the Rain, uh, is about the silent era of film. Gotcha. It's a movie like that that's about a bygone era. Right. Right, the past. Uh, the this, recent, is a, yeah. this, this is a scene that would take place in that film, or another way to say that, but man, come on now, I'm being awful. But uh, <laughs> if you get the title of the film, you'll pretty much have it. Um, oh, boy, oh, boy. It is definitely of its era. It's a classic. Yeah, I, I'll tell you for sure, every damn Oscars retrospective will pretty regularly, this thing will show up when they're like, the movies are a magical, and then they'll do their little clip thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is the thing. <laughs> uh, this is the thing. This is a uh, trip down memory lane. Uh, I'll give you a little hint on the film. Um, okay. It is famously known for uh, the actress being almost entirely in frame in a pretty critical scene. Huh. Interesting. I don't know what that means. And looking directly at the camera, which is not oh, usually oh. the era. Just like her face is entirely in the frame? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, um, say goodbye to Hollywood. Yeah. Nice yeah. done. Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard, my friend. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Have wow. you seen that movie? No. Me neither. This still <laughs> makes me want to. It does or does not? It does. This still makes yeah, me want right? I have a big TV now, like a really nice sound system. This is one of those classics I should watch because, Lord, it's gorgeous. Also, yeah. Can I, huh. could I pull off owning that couch? I don't think I could. I don't think I'm the guy who could own that couch. I feel like there's stuff back there you could definitely have. I don't think the couch is one of them. Uh-uh. I could see that candelabra. Yeah. I could see you having that, but it wouldn't be out. It'd be like in a junk closet. Yeah, it'd be, I put it out once, like, Oh, this doesn't make any sense in my dumb little house. Why do I have a candle? <laughs> I can't light candles in here. Yeah. Uh, I could have that rug. That and, rug is great. And the way I would have acquired that rug is I would have accidentally mentioned I noticed it to my wife, and then she went and bought it without telling me. Oh, that's nice. Why do we have this rug, I would say? This is bigger than the living room. Like, you said you loved it. And you'd say, well, I didn't say I loved it. I said I noticed it. Even if I had, I didn't say I want it. Right? Those are different things. But still, it's a nice gesture, so you can't get real mad. Yeah. And, and now you're stuck with a shitty rug you don't like, and your wife can't figure out why you're not happy enough. Yeah. And I'm like, I remember when I had 900 more dollars. I don't think you should watch this movie with her. <laughs> well, that's true. What do you think about getting a candelabra off? No. <laughs> nope. Next movie. We should buy a movie with furniture I like. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to watch movies with furniture you like? Uh, 
Okay, that next podcast, Furniture and Movies. It's we just review the furniture and movies. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> that's fucking great. I'm in. That's a that's legitimate two. topic. That's nice a, too. That is a great dumb small talk conversation starter. Hey, what's the best couch you've ever seen in a movie? Oh yeah. I don't know if I'd have a quick answer to that. Which I guess is makes it a good conversation starter. You don't want to just go, oh, this one. Because <laughs> the best everybody thing. knows <laughs> Ocean's Eleven had the best couch. What if okay. so many people were like, eh, Sunset Boulevard? Everybody was like, oh, they all <laughs> like that couch. Oh, dude, SP all the way. I might say Mame. The movie Mame has a prominent couch, and that just popped in my head. Okay. Maybe I'm good at this. Hey, you know what? I can't even think of a specific couch, but I'll bet Michael Clayton had fantastic couches. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything with Clooney. Yeah, that's true. I you bet you, too. Him a pretty couch. I bet you they had a couch they wanted, and he wanted, and then they invited a lot of couches they knew weren't right to the callback just so that the producers could see him. Smart. Yeah. And then those couches have a great story. Right. Uh, Which doesn't hurt them. Yeah. And they've been in wonderful movies since then. I'll bet there's a, a few scripts he decided to make because they were like, here, this is what the couch is going to look like. And he's like, oh, that's, that's a pretty good couch. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Six weeks on that couch. <laughs> Why not? I'm gonna invite all my friends to sit on that couch. Yeah, next Christmas, all my friends get this couch. Oh, it's so great. You hang out with Clooney, he always gets you a couch. I have like 15 mm. couches. Then you gotta fucking fly it home from Lake Como. <laughs> Thanks, I guess, but still gonna cost me $14,000. <laughs> but again, great story. It is a perfect story. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Virginia. I did. Um, which is a word from that one song. Yeah. Uh, there's another Billy Joel song with the word Virginia in it. Oh my God. All right. Well, I'm going to hope that the second one you're thinking of is only the good by young. No. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, only the good by young, which I couldn't remember the name of a second ago. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> like you were, I thought you were just being flavorful, which you were, but you were covering. That's great. Uh, the older I get, the more I learn to cover my uh, dementia with flavor. I just keep saying weird, wrong things. Oh, that's a different move. I need to learn. But yeah, that's why the podcast is so watchable, because <laughs> we have two approaches to our dementia. Only <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, the guy young. In the second song, it is not someone's name. It is a reference to the state. Oh, okay. Um, it's a deep cut. Virginia cul-de-sac. We didn't start the... Yeah, <laughs> <I can't remember. laughs> uh, wow. Well... Okay. I can give you the line and you won't know the title of the song. Well, do, but I'm going to give me the line anyway and then say the song because I'm conceding. I don't know. Okay, sweet Virginia cigarette burning in my hand. Nice line. <laughs> That's a nice lyric. You, you used to be a friend to me and now I understand that you've been eating up inside me for some time. Son of a bitch that's a good line <laughs> what song is that somewhere along the line from the piano man lp now is the song itself good yeah that's a good one all right i'm gonna listen to that i'm not picking it at this point okay because i did actually pick a song but lord that's a good lyric yeah, it's very nice. There's a lot of uh, weird little hidden gems on those early albums. Wow, 
I really like that line. And no, I'm going to, this gives me something to do just for fun. Some Billy Joel fun, not Billy Joel homework. Oh, nice. Now that, you, now that you've turned in your master's thesis, <laughs> have a little fun with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm on summer break and I'm that nerd. I'm like, oh, here's what right. I do that's fun. <laughs> I couldn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't get to study the stegosaur while I was working on my paper because I had I was only doing raptors. <laughs> I'm gonna go read all the stegosaurus shit I want. Oh, yeah. Happy summer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I can't. I still can't tell if this is good or terrible. <laughs> so put in the comments, just write good or terrible. That is somebody else's show where they analyze our show. Yeah. And I, I will watch every episode if you do it. There are 35 episodes in. <laughs> I don't know how. Some of it's just an hour of fury. <laughs> just, the, <laughs> just the yeah. description, nonstop cursing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so the song that I picked, I don't normally do this, but I like the song. And uh, it's the picture I want to talk about. Say goodbye to Hollywood. Okay, great. It's a really pretty song. It uh, is. I'm not entirely sure it's got the deepest lyrics, but they're not terrible. They're definitely something to talk about. Um, I'm going to give you some homework. Okay, uh, done. I'm also going to do this homework. But that song has the very familiar. I think it's an early '60s move that opening okay and there are a lot of songs that do that so i will find another one and you find six more <laughs> <laughs> that's your homework i tried to do homework this time and i was like i wanted to do a fun bit where i was going to name all the songs that open with the television sign off and I found one, which is this one. Oh, well, then you did it. Yeah. You or did I, it. Or I'm a terrible student. Yeah. You get, you get uh, complete. Grade <laughs> complete. Oh, I like, yeah, you're right. I know that because I- I, I got uh, one already. When I, I was at work recently, our one of our producers, Eric, who is a music, guy a musician and a smart guy was just doing that on the table absent-mindedly and i just started singing <laughs> say goodbye to hollywood and he said what the fuck are you doing i've never heard that song and i said well what song were you doing and then he said well it's this song it's this other song and i was like oh shit i didn't know it was the whole vein wow it's a vein of musical or there's a great video. You can find it on YouTube yourself, or I'll link it to this episode because it's kind of a cool video by this guy. And it's mostly he does a video about copyright issues in music. Yeah. And one of the things he talks about is why you can't copyright certain things, and particular in music. And he'll give the example of a thing that occurs in a pop song and they tried to sue somebody else. Uh huh. And it turns out it's like in Mozart and it's in everything. It's a fun video. Hold on a second. Is that one of them? Sue's playing a song that I think starts like that. Does it? This is, this is very important. Does it start that way? We think um, that. is how leader of the pack starts. That's fantastic. And I, I'm telling you, I already have an example from the same era, not leader of the pack. Well, who played the keyboards on the leader of the pack demo? Billy Joel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we should, this should all be next week, but I couldn't help it. Wow. Um, that's We've unlocked the Billy Joel cinematic universe. It's a time travel song. 
I don't mind if you want to. Uh, it's up to you. We can do a special episode next week all about songs that start that way and uh, put Say Goodbye to Hollywood off for a week if you want to. Does that sound fun? Here's what, here's what will happen if we do that. I will never find one more. <laughs> <laughs> So I will stick to the plan. Okay, done. All right. <laughs> All right. That's uh, you are a wise man. Because uh, uh, the next title of next episode would probably have been train wreck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in, and I really hope that uh, who's our regular listener? Uh, oh, Bruno Mars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope one of the songs is by Bruno Mars. That would be really cool. Oh, that'd be great. Am I doing it right? I don't know. Doing it right. Yeah. All right. And as we always say, good night, Bruno.